86 Charles is brought to you by Amazon. Go to 86charles.com and click on the Amazon link. Amazon is the perfect place to start prepping for the end, now that the Donald is president. The apocalypse is nigh. The Six Charles, with your hosts John Darby and Travis Spencer. And with that, welcome to 86 Charles, Travis Spencer. What's up, dude? John Darby, I got one simple question. Why the hell are you playing me that song to start this podcast up? Well, that's an excellent question, Travis, and I'll tell you why. Because apparently, spiders could theoretically eat every human on Earth in one year. Travis, did you know that the world's spider population weighs 29 million tons? And you're asking, how much is 29 million tons? What does that look like? That's four... That's a lot of tons. That's like... uh... (laughs) That's 478 Titanics. Ah, it's a big ship. 478 of them stacked up. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of ships. I'll yeah, that's that. a lot of ships. Do you know how many spiders that is? <laughs> Too many. That's a lot of damn right, spiders. So I'm going to I'm going to um, give you some facts on this real quick. So we have a so we have a jumping okay, off point. Okay. Spiders are quite literally all around us. A recent entomological survey of North Carolina homes turned up spiders in 100% of them, including 68% of bathrooms and more than three quarters of bedrooms. Spiders mostly eat insects, although some of the larger species have been known to snack on lizards, birds, and even small mammals. Given their abundance and the voraciousness of their appetites, two European biologists recently wondered if you were to tally up all the food eaten by the world's entire spider population in a single year, how much would it be? The world's spiders consume somewhere between 400 and 800 million tons of prey in any given year. That means that spiders eat at least as much meat as all 7 billion humans on the planet combined, which is only about 400, mil- uh, yeah, 400 million tons of meat and fish each year. Uh, for, a more, for a slightly more disturbing comparison, the total biomass of all adult humans on Earth is estimated to be 287 million tons. So even if you tack on another 70 million tons to account for the weight of kids, it's still not equal to the total amount of food eaten by spiders in a given year exceeding the total weight of humanity. John, this is all fine and well. Is it? But do you have, like, are you are, are you afraid of spiders? Are you, do you have arachnophobia no, yourself? I, I mean, I don't love spiders, but I don't have an active fear of spiders, no. I mean, if I see a black like, widow, I'm a not spider, thrilled. Yeah, but if you get a spider in your apartment, do you call the landlord no, to come kill come it, on. or do you just no, man up and course, smack I it? Destroy it, John. The only I've spiders even I've a ever few. been I'll afraid of. I'll even let a few go if it if it happens to be convenient to do so. I've let them go before. Yeah, they're good. They actually catch other asshole insects. Like I'd much rather spiders than flies. Flies sure. are annoying as shit. But like once spiders get to the point of Starship Troopers, then I'm scared, bruh. I'm scared. Until then, eh. Even like a brown recluse, yeah, it's terrifying. It might kill you. No, it but will. Like, if I see you one on one, spider, you're dead. Like, I am a spider killer, bro. I'm I'm not worried about spiders. I'll I'll grab a spider in my hand. My, smash my it. creepiest spider encounter was I can't. This was my this was in my old apartment in North Hollywood. I came home one night from work, and there was a uh, like a thread of a spider web. From my heater, which was like the on-wall vent heater style, 
going from that to to my Classy. coffee table, single thread, Black Widow just hanging from it. Ooh. Man, that was disturbing. You like immediately identified it. You saw well, like I see, the, it looked. The, I could tell how I could tell how dark it was. It looked, and I'd seen a Black Widow before. So then I turned on the flashlight on my uh, phone so I could see its underbelly, and sure enough, the two little red hourglass looking thing. Yeah, that's freaky. There's that moment, like same thing with scorpions when you just like you know that that thing is very poison. If it hurts you, it's gonna oh, be really bad. Yeah, that was not cool. Because that you know, was just the one I could see. Most, what if I, I didn't know where the other ones were? Disturbing. It's pretty freaky. It's pretty freaky. I'll give you that. But this thing with spiders eating the entire population, like, that would be great. I wish that they, I wish that when a spider landed you on in the middle of the night, it just started eating you. But that's not the real it's, case. Okay, it's not going to happen, but it could. What if? What if something? What if something in nature flipped in spiders and all of a sudden they decided that they wanted to eat us? I don't think we'd stand a chance. No, it's more likely once... Yeah, but no. what I'm saying is more likely that once an extinction-level event happens and we all die, the spiders just eat us. Do they dead carcass? I don't know. I assume. But that's... I mean, I don't care about then that. Then we have care no what remains. my body after I'm dead. But I don't want to die from being eaten by an obscene amount of spiders. I mean, you would be the kind of person that got eaten by a spider. Like, we, you'd be alive. We all would you'd be, be so scared. And, that's the whole point. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'll fight them till the day which I die. Would be, which would and be when I die, they could eat me. No, yeah, dude, I'll smack a spider so hard. Like you could, like a black widow's not going to win. It might, it might sting me, but then I'll suck the venom out. How much? Let me ask you. On how much do you weigh? Venom. Uh, I've been smoking cigarettes again, so I'm down to like 170 pounds. What if? What weight. if 200 pounds of spiders were on you? Dude, I will fucking I will just torch them. Oh, okay. I will torch cool. all two hundred pounds cool. of spiders. Okay. Yeah. I carry around a blowtorch in my back pocket. I'm ready to roll always. I can fight a spider out with a knife. I'll just I I don't a like, I'm not sp- afraid of a spiders. A spider, of course not. Two hundred pounds of spiders? You're in trouble, bro. Okay, that's where the blowtorch comes in. How did that's you get the blowtorch when you... you were covered in two hundred pounds of spiders? I turned the knife into a blowtorch, John. <laughs> I I have I have crisper in my back pocket. Dude. I can change the wait. Your spider the, food oh, like knife doesn't have DNA. Else. I can't do that. I have a 3D printer. I have a 3D printer on my back at all times, John. I'm just ready to blow out a. Fucking, if I need a blowtorch, nope. I just nope. Type in the code. Food like the rest. Hear that? Yes. Type it in codes, John. Once again, you've proved yourself to be less of a man than I am with this no. spider story. No, being being logical so and realistic on. and intelligent doesn't make me less of a man. And the fact that you think that tells no, us it's, all it, what we need to know about you as a man. It's literally you're afraid, afraid. of the outdoors. Of course, John, I've lived I'm in the mountains. I'm afraid of the indoors in this We're case. We're coming on a year. Why haven't you visited me in the amazing mountain? It's been a year, John. Are you afraid of no, the mountain? No, it's just my it's Like, it's oh, you're preference. afraid. I would rather spend time alone than time with you. <laughs> no, you need to be in a city where you have walls and cement and you're like you're just you're a very no, scared so person. Now, and I think it's very cute, but it's Of course that's pathetic. the way you spin it. Here's what the reality is. You live in the mountains because you're afraid. So you like to hide from people and from things and everything you can. You you've run away from life. Yeah, I want to get the I f- however, yeah, day from people. by day am conquering the concrete jungle. John, no. If you were conquering the concrete jungle, you would own a lot of concrete jungle. Me, I am much more cognizant of the reality that I'm a wash up in a piece of shit life. So I've just decided to retreat to a mountain where I only have to contend with nature because man, look at our surroundings, is not even worth. And you know, we don't have a chance against how many, how man anymore. Rocky quotes I'm in the ninety nine percent. How many different Rocky quotes about getting knocked down but getting back up? We just we just need to shut this whole <laughs> segment down because I'm done with you. That's it. I hope a That's spider it. comes and eats this segment. Feels like spiders crawling on my skin. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm itching. The spiders all in town. The evening of the moon. Fire for the fire. I 
I'm ready to start. Get it going. Get it flowing. Get the party started. I read the facts and nothing but the facts. So help me, Charles. 86 Charles means means 86. 86 course is a term um, that you're, you're, you're no longer welcome. You're, 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 you're out and expired. Uh, we have no more of you. We're out of that product. You are 86. 86 Charles. Best show, great show of all time. Yeah, it's 86 Mr. Charles. I refer to Charles. Uh, 86 Charles. 86 Charles.com. It's a good show. Best show, great show of all time. For Mr. Charles, who's 86 Charles. This is Charles. Charles, 86 himself. Say, hey, man. Time to go. Get the f out of here. You're 86. Boop, 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 boop. Nah, nah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Rap- Nickel. 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 What? Five topics currently trending. Travis. Calm down, John. First of all, I mean, calm down. All right. Hey. Go ahead and read. I like to come in with the heat, man. Wow. It scares off the spiders. Ugh. What do you know about ice? Well, it takes, you have to freeze it, so it's about 32 degrees to get ice. See, right there, you're already wrong. It's frozen water. That's what I said. You didn't even say what it that's was. what I just said. No, you said you have to freeze it. Well, obvious. Uh, that's a, like I'm I'm jumping the science <laughs> 2.0. I didn't know you were an idiot. Oh, well, I did know you were an idiot. Radical idea could restore ice in the Arctic Ocean. Why do we need ice in the ocean? I'm going to tell you. Leave it to a researcher who studies icy moons in the outer solar system to come up with an out-there scheme to restore vanishing sea ice in the Arctic. Ice is a good insulator, says Stephen Desch, a planetary scientist at Travis's alma mater, Arizona State University in Tempe. The Sun Devils, holla! Go Devils. James Harden. On Earth, stop it. <laughs> on Earth, sea ice is much thinner, but the physics is the same. Ice grows on the bottom surface of floating flows. As the water freezes, it releases heat that must make its way up through the ice before escaping into the air. The thicker the ice, the more heat gets trapped, which slows down ice formation. That's bad news for the Arctic, where ice helps keep the planet cool, but global warming is causing ice to melt faster faster than it can be replaced. The answer to making thicker ice more quickly? Suck up near-freezing water from under the ice and pump it directly onto the ice's surface during the long polar winter. There, the water would freeze more quickly than underneath the ice where it usually forms. In theory, Desh says, the pumps used for this top-down approach to ice growth could be driven by technology no more sophisticated than the windmills that have long provided water to farms and ranches on the Great Plains. Uh, So there you go. John, I don't like it. Pumping near frozen water to save the world. I don't like it one bit. I don't think it's going to help. I mean... What's what's the point? Oh, we want more ice, so it comes up from the bottom, and then it's just going to get hotter on the top. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. You don't think this is a very practical solution to what could be a gigantic problem? Well, the problem is, John, that when we put this device at the bottom of the ocean that's making ice all of a sudden, it's going to kill like ten thousand species. Suddenly, we're not going to. We don't know the side effects of what it's going to do beyond making ice. You know, like well, they don't put it in the bottom of the ocean. First of all, so they're putting it on the they surface. They envision putting such pumps on millions of buoys throughout the Arctic. Okay, either way, like it's just the problem of we we need to fix like we need to attack global warming from where we're at is from the surface. You know, it's like okay, so why has it gone wrong? Oh, because emissions and all this terrible th- all the terrible things that are happening with how we produce all of the plastics and garbage that we need and nuclear you know like we need to attack it from there it's what have we done to already screw up the earth so now we want to make more things that are possibly going to kill a bunch of species in the ocean because we're going to put it on a buoy like it's the wrong approach it's a good idea but it's the wrong approach and it's probably maybe easier to fix things before they're because you don't have to fight the energy companies for this one right i was just wondering how wrong do you need to be before i need to jump in and save this well i'm glad you let me talk a little bit for once jesus christ well i wanted i wanted you to let get i wanted to let you get that out there so i can tell you why you're wrong let's hear it 
Jesus. Um, I mean, genius. So, for for you to talk about it destroying the earth, do does the does the same technology that brings water to farm destroy the earth in terms of the windmills and the pumps and the things of that nature? No, it's fairly safe because the whole point of this operation is to save the environment. Okay. I get that. That's the whole point of it. So it's not going to be designed to kill the environment to save the environment. But that doesn't make sense. That's a terrible. That's a, and I know he went to ASU, but he probably still knows better than that. That's a terrible example of it because it, did did we bring water to farms to save the environment? No, we brought them to to, to help farms. Yeah, to feed the people. Like it's a and different we need thing. Farms for and, to save us. And, okay, so farms like bringing water to farms led to factory farming, which led to crazy gas emissions like that's a, the worst example you could possibly give what the hell are you talking about what i'm talking about is the technology being used and i'm gonna read it again is no more sophisticated than the windmills that have long provided water to farms and ranches on the great plains okay now the, where you're those correct, save the environment no those all led to the destruction of the environment do you get that you're completely wow. Like great, it's a low energy thing, but creating the farm itself, like I'm saying, possibly creating the ice itself is going to lead to more damage than like we think we're fixing it. Oh, the ice is melting, we need to create more ice. No, we need to fix the problem of what's melting the ice, not creating more ice because that's stupid. You you are correct in that yes, we need to stop killing the earth before we can save it. Yes. We need to stop making it worse before we can make it better. But it's never too soon to start coming up with ways to reverse the effects of the things that we've already done. It's not reversing. Which is what this is. It's not reversing. Yes, it is. No, it's creating a whole new problem. It's creating. Okay, so oh the ice God. is going to melt. So, John, picture for me ice melting. Okay, it turns into water, right? So now you have this new ecosystem that is developing because guess what? The earth evolves based on natural cycles. So let's go in as man and fix this problem and let's refreeze. So we have this whole new ecosystem that might be the new greatest place in the world where there's going to be like all kinds of new species and all these things and we're, oh, we're going to freeze it so we're going to have this like time capsule of what the earth was trying to create in this amazing new environment because things were melting and like new life was booming and then we're going to just freeze it it's so stupid. how else do you keep the ocean the proper temperature what travis how else do you do that you you fix it the ice is what keeps this okay, water so, at the at so, the proper temperature. So why is it Without melting? Without the ice, the temperature will not be right. Why is it melting? How do you keep the why is it melting, right? John? Based on it's it's based on natural cycles first of the Earth's evolution and the sun, and plus also human input of what we've done with gas emissions right. and shit like that. So we stop the gas. So what emissions. if we're just this correcting the part fix, that we're ruining? This doesn't fix anything. It's a stop gap that doesn't that, that is it doesn't fix anything. It, it's like, oh, it's a great idea. We're going to fix the ice melting problem, but the, you have to look bigger picture. Bigger picture, John. Thank, 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 like you always say that, but like, thank God that you are not in any of these rooms where any of these decisions are ever made. Because you, it, it would be your sole purpose in life just to talk people out of ever doing anything. Because if you, because if, if, if in your view you look at anything big picture enough, Nothing is ever worth doing, in your opinion. Ha! All of your big picture solutions are always like, oh, we're screwed. If you look at it big picture, That's, you can't do anything about it. Have you listened to a goddamn thing that I've said? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying fix it from the other side. Don't try. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound john that's that's the analogy you need for this but is that not better than doing nothing that's a much better analogy than like oh the wind is that okay but if you put a band-aid on a gunshot wound is that better than doing nothing i don't know i've never had a gunshot wound i've never put a band-aid on it but i can imagine you're gonna bleed out and it doesn't matter what the fucking band-aid is there for and that, and so back to my point like you're everything every point you ever make is like yep oh, can't do anything about anything ever <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Like you couldn't start with a band-aid on that gunshot wound to maybe uh, slow down the bleeding just enough so that maybe help can show up and then maybe someone with some gauze can put some pressure on it and maybe that starts to create a solution. Oh, now we need gauze it and pressure. It has to start somewhere, man. Now we need gauze and pressure to this little ice 
reforming fund. No, I already made the argument of like why it's going to destruct. So for you, the it's ecosystem. either it's either full solution right out of the gate or nothing at all. You can't take steps to make improvements. It's either full solution or nothing at all. It's like it's like going in through the asshole to fix a dental problem, John. That's what I'm saying. You got a cavity, and it's like you go to the doctor, and they're like, "Oh, we're going to go in through the anus." That's what this is. That's exactly what this is. But is okay. So okay. Well, then let's take that stupid analogy. That's another you just made. great analogy. What I'm if the person it today? What if the person doesn't have a mouth that you can access? What if it's completely sealed off? They have no mouth. You cannot enter their mouth through their lips. They have nothing there. But you still have to go fix a dental problem. In your world, it's well, do nothing because he doesn't have a mouth. In the science world, it's like, hey, let's try to go up through the ass and see if we can get to his teeth that way. <laughs> No, you could cut in through the jaw. You could cut it like there's so many better ways than going through the asshole to fix a dental problem. Are you kidding me? Like, don't defend yourself because I made a great analogy with an awful. You never. Awful. You, I don't think you've ever made a great. That analogy was a great ever. analogy. And that was I was point on. You know it. But the point. No, the point is that you're saying that if you can't do it like the easiest way possible, don't even try to do it at all. Did I no? Did I say that's the easiest way possible? I said no. I said because of the energy companies and all the actual money that's in place. But that's the real way to go at it. Like we need to fight these people because that's actual people ruining the earth as opposed to changing the earth. Like we need to stop the people from ruining the earth as opposed to changing the natural cycles of the earth. Is that better? Is that better for you? I don't disagree with you, but to say that this has no – I don't disagree with you on that point. But to say that this has no merit, like, oh, don't do this. Just go stop all of the people killing the earth. You're, that's not a – that's, that's not going to happen. You're afraid There's of going these to, people, th John. It's such a multi-pronged problem that you have to approach it in hundreds if not thousands of different ways. Okay. This is one way that's going to be an approach to it. And it's a positive thing. Are we done? I'm done talking about this. Let's move on to something yeah, else. Yeah, no, definitely. Jesus Christ. I mean, I already proved my point so many times. Jesse will know. There was You had no point to prove. John, there's a new crack. Let's stick with ice. There's a new crack in one of Antarctica's biggest ice shelves, and it could mean a major break is near. Another branch has appeared in a huge crack on one of Antarctica's largest ice shelves, and scientists fear it's only a matter of time before a huge ch chunk potentially containing up to 2,000 square miles of ice, breaks away. If this happens, the ice, sh ice shelf may become increasingly unstable and could even fall apart. Scientists have been closely monitoring the Larsen Sea ice shelf located on the east coast of the Ar Antarctic Peninsula, where the large rift in the ice, now about 111 miles long, has been advancing in rapid bursts in recent years. Between the beginning of December and the middle of January alone, the crack has lengthened by 17 miles. Since 2011, it's grown by about 50 miles. Over the past few months, scientists have noticed that the crack has stopped extending in length, but it continued to widen at a rate of more than 3 feet per day. It's already more than 1,000 feet wide. John, how are we going to fix this? You want a little blower, the little ice machine down below? You think if we just like throw a couple ice machines in the ocean, it's going to fix this? We can't fix it. Nothing's ever going to happen. It's the, the fat cats in Wall Street are pulling the iceberg apart. You can't stop it ever. It's the liberal agenda. No, that's not what I'm saying that's at all. Response. I'm saying you have to fight those fucking asshole Republicans with their business agenda. So we need more regulation on what the companies are doing to stop this. It, like Trump is already like loosening auto regulations in California. L.A., for example, has had much less pollution for years now because the cars have gotten so much better. This is what I'm saying, John. We need more environmental regulation, even though regulation has a lot of. BS but we still, but you still don't want any solutions to what we've already damaged. You still don't want to. You still don't want to repair what we've already damaged. It's not. You can't. Like, what if we could go fix this crack? Would you say like, nope, don't fix the crack, leave it? What are you gonna do? Put some gum in it? You gonna bring an ice machine and try to refreeze it? No, like it's it's gone I'm too far. Scientist, man. You have to fix it from the I'm top not the down, not from things. the bottom up. Okay, it's not from the. It's like you want to fix everything from the bottom up. Like, oh, great, once it gets to chaos. No, look. literally the last story was about fixing it from the top down. Literally said that in the article. 
No. Well, okay. Well, they said solution. in the article, but that like literally, it's actually from the bottom up because they're talking about freezing from the bottom of the ocean up, John. No, they're talking about taking water from the bottom to put it on top and turn it into ice. Okay, but... To speed up the Okay, process. great. So let's put more ice on top. But guess what? Global warming is still happening around you and it's still going to happen. Like, Of course. That's retarded. It's, it's not, so stupid. It, but it's, it's not one or the other. You have to have both. Like, that's why I don't understand that you don't understand. It's not one or the other. It's, it's you have to have both. Okay. Yes, we have no, to no, stop no. killing the earth, but yes, we have to find a way to repair it too. John, we already t- like we've talked about when they re- reintroduced wolves into Yellowstone. Like it's it's this humanistic theory that evolution stopped when we changed something, but guess what? When we changed something, evolution kept happening, and it's going to continue to happen whether or not we're here and to Put a little fucking blower in the ocean and say this is going to fix everything is bullshit. It's not going to fix anything. That? No one ever said that. We can. No one ever said that in any capacity. So what are you saying? You're saying I don't get your argument. Then you want to fix what things. I'm saying is that it's such a large problem that you have to have a lot of solutions. There's many different things that need to happen. Maybe finding a way to to speed up the freezing of ice in the ocean is one of a thousand different things that we need to do. That's all I was ever saying. Maybe, but do you not get the implications of doing something new like this to the environment rather than just pulling back on what we've already messed up? Like the, the, the idea that we can go in and fix things, this is where I brought the wolf argument in, is like it created chaos. Did it not? We've talked about this. It's 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 this. It's as if you would say, let's say someone's been smoking for thirty years. Crack, pot, no cigarettes. Okay, smoking cigarettes for thirty years, and then they s- just stop smoking cigarettes. Okay, that's good. That's going to prevent further damage. But there's still things that you need to do to try to repair some of the damage that had already been done. So maybe you need to adjust your diet a little bit. Maybe you need to do some exercise. Okay, okay, I can get that. So 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 that's the point. Is yes, we absolutely need to stop killing the earth, and it's a much bigger problem than just trying to refreeze ice in the ocean. But refreezing ice in the ocean might help offset some of the damage we've already done. All right, but what I see this f- particular fix as is like a surgical implant in your lungs that is trying to regrow it, and then you have to talk about all the problems of this device that is going to f*** things up. I just don't know why you think it's so invasive. It's buoys in the Arctic. Yeah. Do you know, like, how much life there is out there and how much a buoy, like, changing the water and the temperature is going to change what's evolved from the point since the ice has been melting? I, I, but that's, that's what I don't understand is why you think it's such a dramatic impact to the environment and not in, in, in a negative way. No, it's in a very— Literally all they're doing is taking— what would be slushy water that will eventually freeze and rise up to the top is ice taking that and just speeding up how quickly it gets to the top so that it becomes ice sooner shaking my head i don't see how that has such a dramatic impact on surrounding wildlife it's pretty clear when you're just transferring water no you're transferring water but you're changing the temperature you're like you're modifying the earth with technology all right like that's the problem so the, the slow process that has been these glaciers melting has probably, and I'm speaking out of my ass because I have no idea, created a new ecosystem of life. So now you're going to refreeze it based on the idea that we need more ice. I just, like, that's, that's the crux. But it's not going to be an instantaneous, all of a sudden it's like, oh, it was half melted and now it's frozen solid again. It's not an instantaneous thing. John, this is going to go on forever. We've got to move on. No, I get it. Like, we're at 20 minutes arguing about ice, and I'm right. Yeah, we shouldn't have talked about something so controversial. Ice is very controversial. Moving on. Right, so we're moving on. Even though we didn't even really talk about the crack, it just got bigger. Uh, speaking of where cracks go, honoring a fellow fan one ballpark bathroom at a time. The New York Mets were leading the Philadelphia Phillies 2-1 to one after two innings when Tom McDonald stood up from his upper deck seat at City Field. Nature was calling, and so was his obligation to his childhood friend and fellow Mets fan, Roy Regal, whose death nine years ago left Mr. McDonald, 56, vowing to honor their baseball bonds in an unconventional way. 
by disposing of Mr. Regal's ashes in ballparks across the country. Even more unusual was his chosen method, flushing them down public restroom toilets in the ballparks between, uh, between innings. Quote, the game has to be in progress, that's a rule of mine, Mr. McDonald said. He stepped into a bathroom stall and sprinkled the ashes into a toilet with as much decorum as the setting allowed. A couple of flushes later, and Mr. Regal's remains were presumably on a journey through City Field's plumbing. Quote, I took care of Roy, and I had to use the facilities myself, Mr. McDonald said, emerging from the stall with the empty container. So I figure, you know, kill two birds. I always flush in between, though, he added. That's another rule of mine. The key here is that Mr. Regal was a plumber. So how better to honor him than by pumping his essence into the plumbing, Mr. McDonald said, adding that he has flushed Mr. Regal's ashes at 16 stadiums so far while keeping journals of his trips. Do you have any friends that you would be willing to flush all across the country? John, this is an insult to all plumbers that have ever lived. And not only that, like now I ha- now we're going to analyze the water and I'm going to have to know that there's elements of crack, there's elements of cocaine there's elements of heroin and there's elements of mr regal in my water like it's bad well, enough would have been elements of mr regal regardless whether he was whether he was the deposit or leaving the deposit it's still you're still with mr regal i mean it's a fun story but should we really be flushing people in back into the water supply does it matter i don't know give me some science i think it's 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 not like it's a whole person it's a little scoop you're down with just drinking a little scoop of person every once in a while? <laughs> it's, it, it goes through the same process as whatever you're else you're leaving behind. So, yes, I have no problem with that. Do you need, like, a little blower at the bottom of the urinal to refreeze the water before you drink Mr. Regal so, it, like, it turns to ice and then back to water? Do we need that, too? I mean, that would be help. That would be nice. How's that going to change anything? Ugh. I'm just saying, if you're okay with drinking poo, why are you not okay with drinking a dude? I don't drink poo. Well, I probably drink poo, but I have right. no idea so you're what you're not I drink drinking poo. a dude. I don't know. I don't know what to think about drinking a That's dead the, person. It's the same philosophy, dummy. If you're not drinking poo, you're not drinking this dude. Yeah, but isn't like his essence there? Like I believe more that you're in the. You think essence is stored in ashes? Yeah, your essence is in the ashes, no. bro. No, I disagree. All right, I'm done with you. I'm done with this dust story. Let's talk about more dust. Fine. Scientists with the European Agency, European Space Agency, have a, have shown that it's possible to make durable bricks using simulated moon dust and concentrated sunlight. A similar approach may eventually allow lunar colonists to 3D print their own habitats and structures using materials found on the moon. If we're going to colonize the moon or in any other celestial body, for one matter, we're going to have to devise a cheap and easy way to manufacture materials on the spot. Just shipping stuff from Earth isn't feasible, as the cost of lifting materials from our gravity would be prohibitive. Not to mention environmentally insensitive. To see our planet's satellite is already equipped with the basic building blocks for con- a construction progress, the ESA's General Support Technology Program conducted a proof-of-concept study in which an oven and a blast of light was used to cook up some bricks. John, is this the greatest idea you've ever heard? We can cook bricks on space. We can make houses. we figured out how to go to Mars. So we can go and destroy another planet that you'll refuse to save? We're so when we go to Mars, the idea of using this kind of technology, well, actually, I take that back. Because didn't we make bricks out of stuff that was on Earth in the first place? Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> sure did. So, uh, I mean, obviously, once it gets to the point where we have multi-billion dollar oil companies and we're raping the Earth of all of its oil, sure, then we'll get there. But if we're using dust but how on are the we surface, ever going to colonize a planet without adding farms, which you've already said that you're against? I'm not against adding farms. It's just like it's it's what led to factory farming is what I was saying. So so then we can't have farms. So it's going to be what's going to lead to factory icing, you know, because like there will be a day when we, we can't even get ice anymore. Because it's going to be so goddamn hot on the Earth that we have to go to the Arctic. No, it's because we let it all melt. That's why. But except for your little tiny, cool, awesome machines in the ocean, that's going to be the only ice that's left. I can't wait till I'm literally chilling. <laughs> now, just, I take back everything like, I just said your, about icing on machines. Mars building but I was right nuts. before. <laughs> but I was right before. But this is cool. This is cool. Like, I mean. No, it is cool. I like that they, I like that they have 
a solution for building materials on the planet versus some absurd way to try to ship it or even I'm glad that it's not even really being talked about in terms of like a factory or a manufacturing operation versus it's it's an oven. But you are absolutely right. This is the beginning of the end for Mars. Like once we figure out how to colonize it, it, like we're just going to destroy it. Although like who would want to go to Mars? Like it looks awful. It looks awful. Like I'd love to see it. Like if you knew you could just go do a weekend or something like that. But look at the earth and look at Mars. Where do you want to live? Oh, I want the blue planet. Yeah, man, for sure. It's not even it's not even a question. All right, let's finish this up, John. I'm done with it. I'm so burnt out on ice. Like I don't. I am so even... burnt out on ice. <laughs> I don't even want to do any more stories. But we got one more, and this hopefully, you know what? This should if this doesn't lighten the mood, we should just stop. Undercover cop gets offered a BJ in exchange for McNuggets. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good time. Uh, that's a great that's headline. A good time. <laughs> Um and yeah, sure. Alex Dorino, a twenty two year old woman in actually, hey, guess the state. Which state do you think this was? I'm gonna say South Carolina. No. You're in the ballpark though. A twenty two year old woman in Florida. Oh, I should have known. My bad. You should have known yeah, Florida. Easy. Yeah. That's Once you hear one. it, it makes perfect totally. sense. Totally. Um uh was arrested after nearly giving an undercover police officer fellatio all for the insanely low price of $25 and a box of chicken McNuggets. According to the Miami Herald, the officer was leaving a marathon gas station in Bradentown when he got waved down by Dorino. As any good undercover officer would, in complete character, he asked Dorino to get in the car with him and told her all he wanted was a BJ. After a few minutes of labor negotiations, (laughs) the woman agreed to go down on him for $25 and some McNuggets. The detective showed her the money, then pulled over at a nearby neighborhood where detectives were already patiently waiting to take her into custody. Dorino was charged with prostitution and possession of drug paraphernalia and is being held on $620 bond. Some quick math tells us that at at her asking price, she'd have to perform 24.8 blowjobs and receive an estimated 250 McNuggets before she can bail herself out of jail. John, that is an (laughs) awful line you just read. What the f*** is 24.8 blowjobs? <laughs> point eight. I mean, that that sucks if you're that 25th yeah, guy because you, know I mean? you that, didn't that really that get over the hump. <laughs> point eight is rough. That's yeah. that's pure blue balls. Point nine is even worse. Exa- yeah. yeah. That's, I was like, she got you right there and then deuces. This is awful. One more McNugget she might have finished. This is terrible, John. Like, why the f*** is prostitution illegal at this day and age? Like, well, we've known for years that I ass, mean, I, I laugh because it, it, it's a gas. funny story and a funny headline, but it's a sad life for a 22 year old woman in Florida. Totally. Well, like the the whole thing is, who gives a fuck? And the only person that got anything out of it was the undercover cop. Well, McNuggets or yeah, McNuggets got some free advertising, <laughs> and McDonald's once again selling. What did the undercover cop get out he of it? Got a blowjob out of it. No, he I didn't. I guarantee he got a blowjob <laughs> out of it. Like, he lied about the whole thing. He said it was two blowjobs and chicken McNuggets, but so he got the first one free. <laughs> no, but what kind of, like, uh, like yeah, honestly, I mean, like, how many, like, okay, so how long has this guy been in the fucking force? He's an undercover agent. So it means he's been through some shit, and now he's roaming the streets looking for girls to suck his dick. You got to be fucking kidding me. There are murderers out there, John. People selling fucking, there's pedophiles. There's so many fucking up people and oh great a 22 year old girl that wants to suck his dick we're gonna fucking blow up over chicken mcnuggets come on man well i mean there's a point in there as as inarticulate as you made that. something about ice i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah our ice segment cooled this whole thing uh, john my brain hurts we gotta we gotta cut this off but uh well, it's, it's like i have brain freeze <laughs> literally Literally, we ice. We probably ice the audience. Nobody's listening anymore. Yeah, I need to go chill. All right. Yo, VIP. Let's kick it.
from last week. Hello, folks. Travis would drink umbilical juice to repair his liver. In fact, he says he'd take it with his beer. In fact, he'd mix it with his beer. But here's my concern. If you introduce the umbilical juice to your beer before you introduce it to your body, I'm not a scientist or anything, but I'm worried that would just strengthen the beer. It might reinforce its liver-killing qualities. It might accelerate the downfall of Travis's liver. And the government might see it and decide umbilical juice is dangerous. We might classify umbilical juice as a narcotic. There might be a three-strike rule against umbilical juice, and newborn babies would automatically get that first strike because they're born on umbilical juice, right? Community service straight out the womb, which might not be a bad thing. We should probably require community service. All of this to say, umbilical juice might be beneficial, but I bet weed does the exact same thing. This is Jesse, and finally catching on to Travis's problem with science was my favorite part of last week's podcast. It's time for the Facebook World News Update. This Real to Someone News Update is brought to you by Eight Legs, Two Fangs, and an Attitude. A woman in Medford said, Say Donnie, why your whole squad look like farts come to life. A man in Tucson said, You ever wonder if you died in your sleep, how long it would take for your body to be discovered? My answer isn't in hours or days, it's weeks. I guess all I'm good for is pushing people away so I don't hurt anyone. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet anything that is thy neighbor. Did you know that Moses was smoking DMT atop the mount when he received the Ten Commandments? Yes, he was tripping balls. It makes more sense that God spoke to him now that you know he was high as fuck. The acacia tree, also used by Noah to build the ark is revered because it contains the psychedelic substance dimethyltryptamine. Jesus may actually be nothing more than an Amanita muscaria mushroom. We really have no idea. Now go read the Bible again. You are welcome. said hand that rocks the cradle and roadhouse special edition dvds will be ready by november 2018 a man in los angeles said god can you do me a quick favor i really need you to bless my friends and family amen a man in downey said i'm not sure which is worse how hard it is to hit chest arms or how easy it is to hit legs this real to someone news update is brought to you by eight legs two fangs and an attitude. The itsy bitsy spider crawled up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Dad's got notebooks. We don't know what's in her notebooks. She's gonna show us all her notebooks. Little yellow pants. So this is an email that I wrote in, uh, I had to switch over and find it, in July 13th, on July 13th in uh, 2011. And it starts off, uh, the, the, the subject line is Jersey Shore, and it's sent to Sebastian, who is my French DP at this time. So I guess I should say Sebastian, because sometimes I would just call him that with a French accent because he's French and he's got a twin brother twin French rock stars and one's a cinematographer and I can't remember the other one's a director I think anyway 
Sebastian, this is a long article that was in today's Hollywood Reporter. It is mostly about the production of the Shore Shore show, but it does give you an idea of what the cast is like: real, out of control, shameless, and unapologetic. So, even though it's a reality show, the characters remind me of the Sticks characters. They totally own their potentially sleazy, ridiculous behavior. Deb, that's me. It doesn't say like EXO Deb; it just says Deb. Anyway. Uh, I wrote this to Sebastian, or Seb, as I called him, uh, as a piece of、uh, reference material for this project, the sticks that we're working on. Right, so that's the first thing that I think about. Obviously, when I read this, is that、uh, this was for a pilot presentation that my friends Gina, Sela, and Allison wrote, and they asked me to direct. So it was called the sticks, which I think I just said. And two, even though it was for a creative purpose,、um, you know, because it is a reference, which is a common thing that you would give your cinematographer, I still feel kind of embarrassed that I sent an article about the Jersey Shore to a French cinematographer. It just seems really stereotypically American. And even though I was using it to kind of illustrate a kind of a stereotypical American concept, it's still embarrassing. Anyway, so my other reference was Hee Haw Honeys. So just picture the sticks is about、um, these women living their sort of sleazy, unapologetic life, and it's a cross between Jersey Shore and the Hee Haw Honeys. I think you can get that picture, right? So it works as a reference. So successful、uh, on my part, I guess. Three,、uh, and maybe the most important, or the thing that I really was thinking about, is that I find it consistently shocking. That reality show producers can essentially help ruin their cast's lives, and not feel complicit. Maybe they do feel complicit, and they just don't care. And I'm not saying every reality show ruins cast members' lives because it certainly doesn't. But I really think that, like with Jersey Shore and other shows that I've seen, I just don't understand how somebody can, in good conscience, put people in those situations, and no- knowing that they're going to just go down some like nasty, sad path. Because I always felt like, as a producer, I was always, well, I felt and was taught that you not only are sort of an employer, but you know you have a responsibility, almost like a parent, to your cast and your crew. And so, in this case, like Jersey Shore, it's more like being、uh, like a parent, like you know, like the mother in Pretty Baby, or like Brooke Shields' actual mother who let her actual daughter play the part of a twelve-year-old prostitute, you know, naked twelve-year-old naked prostitute. So it's I it's it's all I don't know if it's irony or just sad reality. Anyway,、um, uh, the last thing is is that I don't know maybe you've had this thought too, but it seems sad that I think that even given all the things that I was just saying that any Jersey Shore cast member would be a better president than our current reality show star POTUS. Even Ron, and he had an anger problem. Maybe not Angelina, but you get my point. Anyway,、uh, I think you should check out the sticks.、Uh, I think there's some clips on YouTube, and I'm gonna go see if I can find Seb and say bonjour, Seb. Comment ça va? And then hopefully he won't say anything back to me in French because I won't be able to answer. And then possibly I'll go look for a healthcare march because I think that. That's what we have to worry about this week. No writer strike, but there's still a fight every day. You have a good week. Hashtag something something. You gotta fight for your right. I've brought bread to men, women, and children. I've brought water with lemon for the table. I have hot tea. Can I box that for you? Change. This is a ghost story. It's not really. It's it's very anticlimactic. So on. Yeah. No. So I was home alone. I remember very young. Very young. I think I was watching.、Uh, I was little, and I don't know why I was home alone. But I was like maybe was, I was like eight or nine, and I was watching cartoons on a Saturday. Nobody. My brothers were gone. My mom was out shopping, and I got the phone rang, and I answered it. And my grandfather had died a couple years ago, and he's hardcore Italian, broken English, old Italian, cranky Italian sailor from the Italian Navy, whatever. Like, very strict kind of crazy guy. 
and so he had a very dis- distinct accent and a way of speaking. And the phone rings and it's all staticky, really staticky. And I'm like, hello, hello, hello. And he's like, Steven. And I'm like, who's this? And he said, it's grandpa. <laughs> and the way he said, the way he used to enunciate the word grandpa, I was like, oh. And so I just hung up the phone. I hung up the phone and I sat on the porch and I wouldn't go back in the house until my mom came home. So, but it was him. It, it was him. Wait, yeah, I got a phone call wow. from your dead grandpa. You got a sad key phone call from your dead. And he said, Stephen, Stephen. Yeah. yeah. How old were you? I was like nine or ten. Wow. That's crazy. The end. That was Steve Sarno, another one of Deb's friends. Excellent story, Steve. Short and sweet, Steve. That is creepy as hell, man. I don't. John, what's your scientific explanation for getting a call from somebody from the dead? (sighs) Scientific explanation was that it wasn't your grandfather. It was somebody either purposely playing a prank or they just happened to to play the right prank at the right time on the right person and it lined up. Right. However, I'm I'm not completely sold that this is a scientific explanation, though. I, I, I wouldn't take a ton of convincing to believe that potentially somebody that has passed reached out in a way like that. Right. I could I could potentially believe that. The big thing that I see here is that he's got his brothers are away. I don't I don't know Steve, but I know when you got brothers, brothers sometimes play tricks on you. So Very much so. That's what that's a possibility. Could have been like uh, you know, wasn't that uh Awful Michael Keaton film, White Noise, kind of about this. That sounds about right, yeah. Uh, maybe the worst movie ever, but... He, here's what I thought of. It's it's semi-connected. So, my mom received multiple prank calls at like 3 in the morning from some kid. And so she would answer the phone, and the kid would be like, Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Like, things like, things like that. Right. So once I heard this story, I thought about, like, well, what if, and, you know, God forbid, she had just had a grandson that passed. And then this kid just happens to call with this prank being like, hi, grand." I mean, it wouldn't probably take a lot of convincing for her to believe that maybe that was her grandson on the line. If, you know, yeah. age is lined up or whatever. Absolutely. So I was thinking, I was like, this person could have just taken a shot in the dark and it paid off. Or I think you have a very good point that the brother's not in the house. They very well could have. Or who knows, maybe when your soul is released from your body, you somehow, some people end up in the electromagnetic spectrum, like in in a phone line. And and I'm glad that you actually said it, because I didn't know what term to use. But yeah, when you're dealing, I think when you're dealing with energy slash electricity, I I do think some weird things can happen. And I don't know what happens to people when they die. Yeah. And we have, I mean, I've said it so many times, you know, we just our very limited view of what we can see in light and perceive in energy and sound. You never know, man. It could just be. Yeah. No, that's that's why I wouldn't. I mean, scientifically, if I if I had to stick to science, I'd say, yeah, no, it was probably a prank, whatever. Any possibility. I'm not I'm not 100 percent married to science in this case. Any possibility that it was the vapor coming off of a block of ice that was too close to a phone? <laughs> you are just the worst person I know. No, I, I, I got vapor I, off there. Is that even a thing? <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. I just had to throw it in there. Uh, but I, I, yeah, no, I know. I, you're stretching. <laughs> I get it. I definitely it. believe in some kind of supernatural. I, I, I don't think science can explain everything, and that's kind of why I think it's ridiculous to just completely cast it out. There's way too sure. much going on, and we have, you know, death is just such a mystery, and you delve into out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences and stuff, and, like, it gets really weird, and there's no way to gauge anything. You know, we can't measure any of that. So, who knows? I, I agree. Who knows? Maybe Grandpa As much as I'm call. not really a... I'm not really a spiritual person, and I don't I don't believe in heaven and hell or anything like that. I I, I cannot say for certain that you know when you die, everything about you is gone. I don't I'm not I don't have that viewpoint either. Yeah, that seems too too simple. It's just on and off, and all of these billions of stars in the galaxy churning gas and all like it means nothing. You know, it's like oh, just you were a life for like. A blink of an eye, and now you're gone. Like, it's kind of crazy to think. 
Well, I think I think it's I, I'm sure we've talked about it before, but it, there is actual energy in human beings, and you cannot kill energy. Yeah, man, you're when you die. So it has to go. Whatever that is, whatever is is makes that up. Whatever's contained in that, it has to go somewhere. It has to do something. Right. What is it? It's 21 grams, right? That's what the amount of weight your body loses yeah. when you die. Can't explain it. Yeah. Don't know that they, that they can't explain. Yeah. Well, Steve, thank you so much for the story. Great story. Excellent awesome. story, Steve. Uh, Deb, of course, thank you f- for the gathering. Sound like another good dinner party. Hopefully more on the way yeah, from that dinner say, party. She knocked out so many stories in one night. She's She is so, like, I could not get a table of my friends to just pass a recorder around telling stories. Even though they've got great stories, they just wouldn't do it for me. Well, you're not nearly, friends are you're not nearly as charming or as awesome as Deb, so that's not a surprise, my friend. Quite possibly the most accurate thing you've ever said. Dude, I'm like, I'm a scientist. I'm cutting with precision. I'm like a surgeon over here. I'm just cutting through your BS. John, we can also thank... In that one particular case. (laughs) We can also thank Mr. Jesse McIntosh, of course. Always. Just bringing it on a weekly basis. He's the only person that has to listen to our podcast every week. So I feel bad for you, Jesse, but thank you. Always appreciate it. Uh, we got it. Hey, I, I feel bad too, but he asked for yeah, it. Yeah, he so. did. He did. You, you get what you ask for sometimes. He deserves it's usually it. not to your benefit. Uh, John, where can the people find us? Well, I mean, you can look in your heart, but if you want something more visual, go to 86charles.com. Or if you still have a landline telephone, just listen, and who knows? Maybe someone will just show up and say, 86 Charles. Who knows? That'd be a pretty dope phone call. That would be pretty good. Well, we need our friends on the other side, you know, the recently deceased ones to do that for us. So shout out. to hey, Yeah. Hey, shout out to the other to side. The ghosts. Shout out to the ghosts. Uh, John, they can find us on Instagram or Twitter at Company Blaster. We're on Tumblr. We're on Stitcher. We're on iTunes. Pretty much you just go to the Google machine, put in 86 Charles and boom, there we are. Boom. That's it. You don't even have to scroll down. John, now how can the people Top help the us? List. How can the people help us? Well, however you get to us through your Google machine, go to 86charles.com. You're going to see a link for Amazon. You click on that guy. You do whatever you normally do on Amazon. We don't care. We don't judge. You buy whatever you normally like. You don't have to do anything else. You can stop thinking about us. But after you're done with your purchases, we get a little bit of kickback on that. And it keeps this, this lovely machine moving. Couldn't have said it better myself, John. It's time to sign off because I can't talk to you about ice anymore. Tell us, John, what are you 86ing this week? Ugh, I, I should 86 future and all ice conversations, <laughs> but I have something I'm going to actually 86. I'm going to 86 qualifying Facebook post. What does that mean? That means when you say something like, I'm not posting this because, that's exactly why you're <laughs> posting it, and we all know that. Clearly. For example, I do not share this story to brag or for praise, just as a reminder to be kind and never turn away someone in need. That's exactly why you're posting this, is because you want to brag and you want praise. Could not be for any other reason, otherwise you would have just done what you've done and not told anybody. I agree, John. The world would be a better place without that. 86 qualifying Facebook posts. Good day. Ugh, just be honest. Like, I would, like, look, you still did a good thing. So I can appreciate that and still continue to do good things. But be honest if you're just doing good things to have people give you a thumbs up. I respect that. I'll give you an actual like if you said, hey, I did this because I wanted likes. Because at the end of the day, you still did a good thing. And I support that. Do we need to go back down to one word, 86-ing? This is ridiculous. No. I have stories to tell. The new boy in the Downstairs and it's understood He's there just to take good care of me Like he's one of the family